I've, I've spoken uh, as a uh, rep at public comment. Uh, this, uh, this meeting was a hit job. I echo uh, Selectman uh, Griffin's remarks. Uh, there's uh, those self-professed people in this town, uh, the self-proclaimed I work behind the scenes. Uh, Senator Stiles, former Senator Stiles, approached the selectman on this board and was directly involved with the selectman on this board, interfering with the negotiation of labor practice and uh, wished to offer her terms on exactly what limited uh, length of contract we were offered to the town manager. Uh, there are others on this board that were instrumental in this, this hit job on the town, this hit job on me personally, and uh, I'm going to uh, take the, at least some of the time to explain the facts, as I've explained to the chairman that I would. Uh, I am on the uh, State Parks Advisory Council for the state of New Hampshire, in addition to the Seacoast Pollution uh, uh, Investigation Commission, where I was the night, as the governor well knew, about the most salient and exigent issue in this town. And he played his little dog and pony, where is Phil Bean act. On January 12th, the only written documentation to this board, the only written documentation to the town manager, to the selectman, to the town attorney, came from Phil Bryce, directed to me and other members of the advisory council. It's January 12th, 2018. That's a Friday at 4.51. Usually when you send out something Friday, close to 5 o'clock. It's kind of like when bad news happens in Washington. You release it then, and people don't pick up the email, perhaps, or they lose it. I get hundreds and hundreds of emails in my business as a state rep and as a public servant here in Hampton. Dear council members, Governor Sununu will be hosting a public forum at Hampton Beach to discuss investments by the state into the beach. That was the title. The governor was going to come down here, and he was going to discuss investments by the state into the beach. Now, I don't know who talks professionally like you're going to talk about investments by the state into the beach, but it sounds like something if I was at Winnicott High School in a sophomore, my teacher would send it back and say, what does that mean? Now, that's the only, only con confirmation that there was a meeting that was coming to this board. Mr. Sullivan will back that up. Mr. Welch will back that up. And if there's another board member that had written information that the governor was coming to speak about something that they termed investments by the state into the beach. Furthermore, upon the governor's attack on this town and my personal attack that I suffered by the governor, and that's the lesser. I'm not worried about that. I'm a big boy. I can take, I can take an attack. Uh, I signed up for the, the big bucks here, the uh, $200 a year and the 3000 here. I sent an email to Mr. Welch, and I asked, this was uh, Tuesday night, after Max Sullivan told me while I was serving the state in my town and the Portsmouth City Council about a much more important matter, cancer in the water and children dying and water supply, I asked if there were any written communications to the town of Hampton from the governor and from the state of New Hampshire regarding this meeting. The answer was no. I asked about the gen genesis of this meeting to Mr. Welch, the town manager. Mr. Welch replied today, I have no idea. I was not told. This is a $26 million corporation. This is the town of Hampton. The governor is a politician, and he acted like a politician in this meeting. I asked about negotiations. Was there any discussion of that by the governor or anybody from Concord? No, we were just asked, asked to be present. So responded the town manager today. When was the entire board notified? Now, this is important when we're talking about there's a tort action. This is important about when, the, when any elected official, one of 50 in the nation, comes to town. When are we officially notified, Mr. Chairman? The town manager informed me today, Jamie told you and I told each board member when I saw them. Now, let me tell you right now, there's about 9 million appointments that we, we keep as people that work for a living, Mr. Chairman, people that represent the town of Hampton in Concord, and people that are selectmen here. Okay. I asked further, if any state representatives or senators were notified by the governor's office or any state boards, committees, commissions were notified. The only notification we got was this different meeting, this public hearing on investments by the state into the beach. Nothing about the governor's agenda items. So the meeting's taped and available. 
And I would say this course of action, the governor's grandstanding, and he has no ability to spend money in Concord. The, governor's, the governorship is a very powerless position in this state. The governor's council has to approve any expenditure over $5,000. He can't appoint anybody as a commissioner without the governor's, account, uh, the governor's uh, council approval. He can't pass a law, and he has to pass a budget through the House and the Senate. Now getting on to the paper here that came through here, and I agree with Rick 100%. And, and, and uh, to, you know, we, we signed up for this. We can take it. But, you know, they had their play. They were very deceptive about this meeting. It was a hit job. It was advertised by nobody, went out by the state council, and nobody in this town, including the town manager, uh, was notified what it was going to be about. But I guarantee there are some people in this town that knew exactly what was going to happen at this meeting. And I guarantee they talked about it. But they're not subject to the right to the no like we are, the right to no law. See, they talk to the governor, and they have his telephone number, and they set up meetings like this. And then we have to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And this is the exact same reason why this tort must go forward, because you can't trust these people, and they operate in a duplicitous manner, and they make promises, and they break them, and we have thousands of taxpayers that pay their $5,000 a year, and we have employees that don't get contracts, and they get shorted. Now, in the Portsmouth Herald edition, governor comes to Hampton to prevent lawsuit against state beach over costs, over, over beach costs. Nobody's had, a, nobody's had an inkling in this, this corporation about what's going on, but Phil Bryce says that it's going to be to discuss the investments by the state into the beach. The governor calls it his A-team. Well, I don't call it the A-team. I don't know what I call it, but I certainly don't call it the A-team. The governor said his goal was to bring the necessary parties together to discuss what led to the selectman's vote in September. Now, if the governor wants to have a meeting about something, he better schedule it, and he better have an agenda. And if the town of Hampton and the chairman is going to accept the meeting, then he better know what the agenda is about. And he better have the details, and we better be informed. And if we think we're going to agree, at least on my watch, uh, and, and, and negotiate with people like this, uh, you got the wrong guy. And you might have the wrong board of selectmen if they change that vote. And if they do go and change that vote, ask them which, which 2,000 taxpayers have to pay their tax bill and not receive any benefit from it. I'd like to thank Max and the Seacoast Media Group for their excellent reporting on this because they, they allowed us to, to provide some feedback like this. And then we have Hampton Beach Area Commission John Nyan. Now, I, I don't know what John does, but... The Hampton Beach Area Commission doesn't run this town, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and Hampton Beach Chamber of Commerce doesn't run this commission, Mr. Chairman. And I guarantee that Mr. Nyan in the governor's office spoke before this meeting on the agenda. And I didn't know anything about it, and you didn't know anything about it, or maybe you did. Let's not, let's not or maybe, maybe, I, maybe, let's not maybe you did. did maybe did you know. had your chance to talk, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. I have mine. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, totally. you're getting, you're getting a little. Totally. No, leave you out of it. You're, you're part of the problem. Was there an agenda? Uh, be careful. I hear there wasn't an agenda. Wait, wait. Let, let, let him finish. Be careful what you say. Real careful. You. Real careful. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to accept your threats. I've been threatened by the governor. You're small fish in this potato. Okay? <laughs> what okay? a fool. You're a very small fish. I've heard lots of names. I've heard, this is the governor. I've heard lots of names attached to this potential lawsuit that apparently didn't even show up tonight. This is after the governor's office was informed about this issue. This is how he treats a state rep. This is how he treats a citizen. This is how he treats a selectman in this town. Regina Barnes, selectman Barnes, she stuck up, says, I didn't like the fact that the governor was able to say that. Selectman Griffin, I appreciate your support about this circus that has suddenly transpired. Going further, town versus the state. The governor had productive and engaging discussions and received positive feedback for his stacked audience. Governor Sununu again playing selectman, remains, con un remains convinced that his unnecessary lawsuit is no more than a waste of Hampton's taxpayers' dollars. It's out of his wheelhouse. This is the town of Hampton. The governor doesn't decide what this board does. The governor doesn't decide what we spend for taxes. The governor's job is in Concord. 
He said he was appalled by Bean's absence of the meeting, considering Bean's advocacy for the suit. You get sandbagged on the purpose of this meeting. You're not told what the purpose of this meeting is. I fully disclose where I was. I was at the Portsmouth City Council, and I get sandbagged like this. It's not about me. It's about who the people of Hampton rep who elect to represent them. And this is the disrespect that the governor of New Hampshire treats elected Hampton officials like. Bean said he didn't attend the meeting because he attended Portsmouth City Council meeting to speak on matters related to his work on a task force. It is not a task force. It is a commission. And it's a cancer cluster investigation commission because there are dead children and Lydia's parents and Sam's parents have testified in Concord and there have been tears and this is one of 300 in the nation. You'll hear later on when the town manager is asked about our ability and our confidence to supply water to this town. Governor hasn't done a thing about it. Governor insults me when I'm going to protect the interests of this municipality to run his town. His town, it's a revenue camp for $200 million a year. And he's done nothing. He, won't, he was not asked the town manager about this. I doubt he's asked any select board member about it. But when you do, go and do the government's work, you're keel hauled and you're backstabbed and you're disrespected. And that's to the town of Hampton. I think it speaks clearly to the legitimacy of the complaints being filed here. So the government, the governor, is talking about the legitimacy of this vote. There were four votes against, or four votes for this tort. And His Excellency is talking about the legitimacy of this vote. So now he's passing judgment on the board of selectmen in Hampton, a sovereign town. There was one vote for it, and that was the chairman's, not, or, or to oppose it. Now he's talking about the legitimacy of a duly elected board in the state of New Hampshire, the town of Hampton, the United States of America. That's bullying, and if you think you can negotiate with people like this, with this lack of this this lack of, of equanimity and equality, you're wrong. Selectman Rick Griffin defended Bean and called Sununu's mark a cheap, cheap shot. It's wrong to say it's very telling that board members are not available to his last minute's media blist. Continuing on, this might this might punch a little hole in the governor's 18 concept. It was a terrible accident down at the beach several years ago, and it was adjudicated, and it went to court, and this is also in the Portsmouth Herald. Victim and young driver's crash awarded $9 million. The governor's A team was part of the approval of the design down there, and this is a local, local family. And they're known to generations of people in this town. And out of that $9 million, the contractor in the state of New Hampshire are responsible for 70% of it. Now, by the same right these people had to go to court and have their day, so must the people of Hampton. And I wonder if His Excellency got involved in the, in the, the car crash in the $9 million award. And I wonder if the governor called those people and held a meeting. And I wonder if the governor called the judge. And I wonder if he said that these victims of this crash don't have a right Mr. Chairman, don't have a right to go to court, and it's wrong to go to court, and they don't have a right for this. And I want to talk about what Mr. Harris said about the legal system, and that was the attorney, the attorney for the plaintiff. We are gratified that the jury recognized the harms and losses that were suffered. That's what our system is designed to do, and we really do believe that justice was done in this case. And that's all we're simply asking for. We don't ask to be attacked. We don't ask to be deceived. We don't ask for camouflage. We don't ask for deception. We don't ask for people to hold a meeting and then come in with a stacked deck with all of the people that work behind the scenes and then offer character assassinations to lowly paid, hardworking public servants and then think that we're going to negotiate with them and receive any justice. And I would say to the town of Hampton, and I would say to the governor, as I will say to the speaker tomorrow very briefly, that this fiasco in this circus is prima facie evidence that this must be heard by a judge, just as this board has determined, and just as the Seacoast me Media Group has rightly opined, and just as everybody that I've talked to 
in town, thanks, except for the people that were probably part, and I'm being very careful, Mr. Chairman, who arranged this meeting that suddenly morphed into uh, calling me out and calling me appalling and uh, trying to change the deck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.